title of the next presentation is Future Sustainable Finance Initiatives. We have with us Mr. Nakajima Junichi, Commissioner of the Financial Services Agency. Let me introduce the speaker to you. Mr. Nakajima graduated from the Faculty of Engineering, University of Tokyo in 1985 before entering the Finance Ministry, which currently is the Ministry of Finance, or MOF, in the same year. After receiving a master's degree from Harvard University in 1994-95, he served as a head of JETRO's Vancouver office, the chief of the debt management policy division of the Financial Bureau of MOF, the chief of the policy division, the planning and management bureau of the FSA, the chief of the planning and management division of the same bureau, vice commissioner of the same bureau, vice commissioner for policy coordination of the strategy development and management bureau, the head of the policy and markets bureau, and the head of the strategy development and management bureau of the FSA, and he took the current position in July 2021. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. I am Nakajima of the National Services Agency. I would like to thank the organizers of the Tokyo Sustainable Finance Forum for giving me this opportunity to deliver this presentation. My deepest thanks to Mr. Nakaso, chairman of FinCity Tokyo, and other stakeholders. Now, sustainable finance, which is the theme of this forum, is gaining importance as the world tries to switch gears to change the social economic structure through the realization of decarbonization. And sustainable finance has increased in importance. Today, I will speak about the domestic trends regarding sustainable finance and the initiatives underway at our agency, the FSA. First of all, to speak about the domestic trends regarding sustainable finance, the Japanese government two years ago in October 2020 came up with a policy to achieve carbon neutrality in 2050. And thereafter, last year in October, the plan for global warming countermeasures and the basic strategy for energy were revised. We came up with the interim target of 46% reduction of GHG by 2030, and we also show to the public an ambitious prospect of energy mix in 2030. In order to live up to these international commitments, while ensuring energy security, the Japanese government is trying to accelerate GX, or green transformation for socio-economic industrial transformation towards decarbonization. More specifically, in the next 10 years, the public and private sectors together will invest 150 trillion yen in green transformation, and that will promote the financing in sustainable finance, which is attracting attention. Further, GX and sustainable finance are initiatives that will realize sustainable society while taking advantage of the strength of capitalism and contributing to economic growth. So it has strong affinity with the new form of capitalism of the Kishida government. The grand design and action plan of new form of capitalism was announced by the government, which includes the expansion of green finance, transition finance, and combination with new financial instruments in order to invite more ESG capital from Japan and from outside of Japan. In this context, the JFSA is engaged in various initiatives in the area of promotion of sustainable finance. Specifically, in December 2020, the Council of Experts on Sustainable Finance was established, and based upon the recommendations of the Council, three pillars were defined. More corporate disclosure activating market function and activating the function of financial institutions. On the first pillar, more corporate disclosure, last year in June, the Corporate Governance Code was revised. Companies that are listed on the prime market of the TSE are suggested and encouraged to both qualitatively and quantitatively increase disclosure based upon TCFD or equivalent international frameworks. And in June this year, the Financial System Council's Disclosure Working Group came up with a report. And in relation to sustainable finance, they are suggesting setting up a new chapter in the securities report regarding sustainability-related information, including climate change response and human capital. 
uh, we will come up with a draft of the amendment of relevant laws in order to introduce the new concept in the next fiscal year. Further, on human capital, in order to promote uh, investment in people under new form of capitalism, much attention is being paid. So domestically, we want to develop disclosure rules and also take leading roles in the rulemaking on the global stage. And through these initiatives, we wish to establish a disclosure system that would lead to the growth of the Japanese economy and to form a virtuous cycle between corporate disclosure and financing so that this will lead to further development of the sustainable finance market. Next, on the second pillar of activation of market function, uh, there are two initiatives underway at JFSA. First of all, in July of this year, in partnership with JPX, in order to support ESG investment and financing, we established an information platform that integrates and visualizes ESG-related investment information. First of all, we will upload public uh, information on public ESG bonds, the amount of issuance rate, ESG strategy, or whether they have obtained external evaluation will be offered, and we will be further expanding the information to be placed on this platform. With the expansion of ESG investment, companies and investors are more frequently using ESG evaluation providers. And one of the challenges is governance, including transparency or fairness of the evaluation method and prevention of conflict of interest. So in July of this year, we came up with a draft code of conduct for ESG evaluation and data providers. And we are encouraging ESG evaluators to sign up in order to improve the quality of ESG evaluation. Last month, the public comment period ended. We are hopeful that we will finalize the code of conduct by the end of this year and obtain uh, evaluators who will sign up. And the ESG evaluation and data providers who sign up will have to comply or explain, comply to the code of conduct or explain why not in order to ensure efficacy of the system. The companies uh, that will have their information uh, disclosed will be connected organically and we're not going to be subjecting only the evaluation providers. We will also be making suggestions on the roles to be played by companies and investors regarding ESG evaluation and data provision and therefore we hope that you will also refer to the code of conduct as well. And with the support of private sector financial institution, we are hopeful that we will be able to contribute to further vigorization of the Japanese financial and capital markets. Next, the third pillar is activation of function of financial institutions. With the acceleration of the trend towards decarbonization, it is important that financial institutions increase their support to their investees in response to climate change and creation of new opportunities. So in July this year, we came up with the basic concept on climate change response by financial institutions. We suggested points to be raised in dialogue between financial institutions and the Financial uh, Services Agency regarding support to uh, corporate clients and risk management and we also suggested how to provide support in climate change response to corporate clients by financial institutions. We are suggesting that more active dialogue be done between financial institutions and corporate clients in order to encourage corporate clients for more initiative in decarbonization. Such debate is ongoing in Japan. Further, transition is another topic where we are seeing active debate in order to realize GX. High emitters in the power or steel sector cannot overnight transition to carbon neutrality overnight. In order to achieve carbon neutrality, we have to take advantage of the high level of Japanese technology and at the same time, we must suggest that financial institutions and investors not just decide to divest and withdraw their funds from large emitters, but through dialogue try to provide support 
and guide them towards decarbonization. So the JFSA is thinking of establishing a study group in order to promote the making of transition plans between companies and financial institutions. Specifically, we want this study group to discuss various points that should be raised in a dialogue between companies and financial institutions for decarbonization and practical challenges as regional financial institutions try to offer advice for decarbonization to their corporate clients and eventually come up with some guidance. Now, so far, I have been focusing on climate change in the variety of subjects of sustainability. But now let me shift my focus to the S of the ESG, or social. First of all, we're seeing expansion of social bonds. In July of this year, we came up with the examples of indicators for social benefits of social projects. By encouraging appropriate disclosure using indicators on social benefits, we're hoping that this will lead to expansion of the social bond market. Further, we hope to promote initiatives not only pursuing the resolution of social problems and increase of return on investment, but expansion of impact investment. Yes, AUM of impact investment in Japan is rising, but the level is still small in comparison to other advanced countries. So we need this to expand. More specifically, from October uh, this month, we want to study start a study group on impact investment so that they can discuss about the various categorization of impact investment related to return on investment and social benefits and come up with a practical guideline on the selection of investee companies, the measurement for social benefits, and disclosure of financing in order to expand impact investment. Finally, the Financial Services Agency is engaged in these initiatives in order to establish frameworks to support sustainable society and growth through the enhancement of function in sound markets. We truly hope that all of you attending this forum will be making great contributions to the formation of a sustainable society. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Nakajima.